Can you please get into your Bibles in the book of uh, 2 Timothy? That's where we're going to derive our theme from. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 2. The Bible says, preach the word. Be, be ready. The Bible says, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. So, I'm just going to pick out this uh, short, short word, be ready in season and out of season. That is going to be our theme this morning. Be ready in season and out of season. Father, I give you praise. Thank you for this time, O oh God. As I share your word, I pray for your wisdom, O oh God. May this word impact the lives of these people. Father, may I decrease that you increase in Jesus' name. Come on, say amen. I know you are putting on your mask, but amen can at least come out. Amen. So, be ready in season and out of season. It's always good to be ready. You get set. You prepare yourself in season and out of season. So, it's very good to prepare yourself. It's good to have a plan. And it's very, very important to be expectant. So, I want to talk about this, being ready in season and out of season. You need to have some plans laid down in your book. You write down in your, just, you know, I don't know where you put your plans, but it's always good to prepare yourself. You get ready. This is Paul telling his son, spiritual son Timothy, he's telling him, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. Meaning, don't allow situation, don't allow anything to take you just by surprise. Just be a man who is ready. Prepare yourself. Read the word, preach the gospel. So, it's always good to be a responsible Christian, a responsible son in the house of God who is prepared for all seasons whether good or bad but some people are taken by shock things happen and they're like oh god why has this happened but the thing is be ready in season and out of season so 2020 is coming to an end a few days remaining to end this year you might have put down a lot of plans as this year was starting you had plans put down in your, uh, on your paper you had a lot of expectations for 2020 you are getting prepared for season and out of season but you find that a lot of things have happened things have you know there are things that came in you didn't expect to see and somehow maybe your plans were interfered with your plans have changed. As 2020 was starting, maybe you hoped to see a lot of things. You are expecting to achieve a lot of stuff. But now as we talk, it's just a few days remaining to end 2020, and you haven't seen most of them. But here, Paul is encouraging this man, be ready in season and out of what? And out of season. Listen to me, children of God. Now, let me give you the scripture, the, the, the chapter where I'm going to, where I want to talk more, where I'm going to have a lot of um, explanation. Let's go to the book of Proverbs chapter, chapter 16. Proverbs chapter 16, verses 1. We're going to just read a f just a few verses there. 1 to, to 4. Proverbs chapter 16. Yeah, I'm right. 16, 1 to 4. The Bible says, The preparation of the heart belongs to man, but the answer, the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirits. Commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. 
The Lord has made all for himself. Yes, even the wicked for the day of doom. Yes. The Bible, the Bible is saying the preparation, the preparation of a, of a heart belongs to man. But the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Other translations say to man belongs the plans of the heart. But God answers them all. So it's always, it's good for you to, to make a plan. It's good for you to have a dream. To write it down. Like most of us had plans written down. I guess you also had yours. They are written in your book. That's good plan. It's very good to hope in the Lord. God does not discourage you from that. To man belongs the plans of the heart. But God answers them all. Listen to me, children of God. I don't know how many plans you had for 2020. But as we talk now, it's like 2020 is going. And these mega plans you had written down, you haven't seen most of them coming true. It's like you are counting a few days to the end of this year. And you are worried already. I'm telling you. A lot of people are worried. They are dying of pressure. They are stressed up. Because their plans have not been realized. Their expectations have not come. And that's what they think. But let us just go slow, slowly. The Bible says the preparation of the heart is good to prepare. You need to prepare yourself. You need to know what you need. You need to have the reason why you are living. You need to be a dreamer. Have a vision. That's very good. And it's good to set time for yourself. That in 2020, I want this. I want to achieve this. I want to see this. I want to travel to, to these nations. It's very good to say that. But again, you shouldn't forget that but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. So if you're a man who is set, who is ready for season and out of season, you need to prepare yourself for this. That if 2020 is trying to run away, and it's like you have a few days to end it, and you have not seen most of the things that you, have, you had put down in your books, don't give up. Don't, you know, don't lose hope. A lot of people have lost hope. They're like, oh God, I, I, I wanted to see this. I wanted to get married this year. But now it has gone, and nobody has come to propose to me. Some people are worried. People are crying. But I've come to encourage you. Never forget that if you're putting down your plans, if you have a dream, then there's someone who masters, who governs time and season. God governs time and season. Say amen. So, you must be, just be somebody that is ready. Just be ready. Because the Bible says, where I have derived our, our theme from 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse, be ready in season and out of the question is, are you ready for both? Are, are you ready in season and out of season? Some people are just ready to harvest. The reason why people give up, it is because they are just Looking at the harvest, they are ready for the, for the season, plentiful only. But you need to be ready for both. Yes, I'm dreaming about this. I want, I want to see this. I want to achieve this in 2020. I want to have this car. But what if it has not come? Amen. So now, the preparation of the heart belongs to you. It's good to prepare. And don't throw away. Some, some, some people, when they set time and they, they have not seen what they wanted to see that particular time, they will get their book and destroy it and burn it and say, maybe God has forsaken all about me. And they give up. Don't give up yet. God governs time and season. Amen? Yes, 2020 is running. 
But who knows? You know, Job says in the book of Job chapter 19, verses 25, I guess I'm right. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and at the end, he will come and stand on the earth. That's Job. He says, For I know my Redeemer liveth, and at the end, he will come and stand on the earth. These are people who are expectant. They are in season and out of season. They are very ready for him. If you perform, I will celebrate. And if you tally, if you, if you have not performed, I will keep waiting. So Job says, I know my Redeemer liveth. In the end, he will come. Now, who knows that before 2020, you have it. You have that thing that is, you know, that is pressing you. You really need it. You badly, you are desperate for that thing. You want to see it before 2020. I've come to encourage you. Your Redeemer lives. Your Redeemer is a living God. He will come at the end. You know, just be expect, be ready. Be ready. The Bible says, it's telling Timothy, be ready in season and out of season. Don't be one-sided. The challenge is, most of us are one-sided. You are just waiting for the good season. You want just to harvest you want to see plenty only. Amen? God is preparing you well. It's good. Actually, God does not discourage us to have plans. He even tells Habakkuk chapter 2. You know, write your vision clearly on the tablets. Put it there. That the reader, he who comes to read it, will run with it. So that means he wants you to have a plan. Say Amen. Your plans are coming true, you know. But now let us let us read slow, uh, let us read down here. All the ways of a man, all the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes. Follow me slowly. All the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes. But the Lord weighs the spirit. Have you heard that? The way, the, the Lord does what? He weighs the spirit. So. You may seem right. You have your, those big dreams. You know, big vision. You're a big dreamer. You're a big dreamer. Thank you. It's very good. But the one who governs time and season. Eh? Weighs the spirit. The Bible says, you may seem good. You may seem right. You know, me when I'm setting my dreams and writing, you know, putting down my, my expectation for the year. I want them that year. That's what they mean. All your ways may seem pure in your own eyes. I want this. I want it this year. I want to drive this year. I want, yeah, I want a land title this year. All the ways of a man, all the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes. But the Lord weighs. Who weighs? The Lord. He weighs. He comes and says, okay, yes, you wanted it this year, but I know I, can, I will not give it to you this year. I'm going to give it to you 2021. Because he knows why. Amen? So this takes your patience. You need to wait upon the Lord. You need to wait on him. Because your ways may seem pure. Because you want it immediately. And him says, oh God, you, I, need, I need to prepare you well. You are still, huh? you are still young. Somehow, I want, I want your, your, your mind to mature. I want your thoughts to, to, to mature a bit. Because you, you have not reached that level where I can give you this. But yes, it's good. I'll give it to you. It's now weighing. Amen? The Lord is going to answer your prayers. I said the Lord is going to answer your prayers. Anytime. You just need to be ready. Be in season and out of be ready in season and out of season don't be one sided i'm telling you a lot of people have given up the people who never come back to church i went somewhere yesterday after here after uh, Fiki's wedding i went to attend another wedding we found a lot, a lot of people with i and pastor newton there are some guys we saw they have fallen because when they served, when they served beers and what, they were drinking. 
And we used to pray with him. And Newton was like, hey man, you are now drinking. Yes, ah, it was, it's just a mistake. People, this is not, this, these are not just stories. We saw people drinking. And we are praying with them. We are worshiping with them. But they've given up on life. <laughs> Say amen. Say, I will not give up. Just be ready in season and, and, out of, and out of season. Just prepare yourself. This is what Paul says. Be ready in season and out of season. We found guys drinking and, and they were not shy. They were bold. I'm a pastor. And my wife was there also. We looked at them. She was just drinking comfortably. <laughs> we left them. They were almost, you know, that was the crazy party for us. We, so, listen to me. The Bible says, all the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirit. God is weighing. He's waiting for your maculity. There are things God checks before he gives it to you. Not that he's, gonna, he's not going to give it to you, but he'll give it to you. But he's weighing some things. There, there are things he has to look at first in your life. To fix first. Your miracle is pending because the Lord is working on you. Amen. He's working on you. There's some things God is fix fixing in your life. But it will come. Now listen. Verse 3. It says, commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. Commit your, your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. Yes, commit them. Just your, your job, your role. Our role is to commit. Eh? Always remind him. The Bible says, you who put God on remembrance, remind him, cling on him until we turn Jerusalem into a praise. Amen? So if you give up, you have done the wrong thing. Why should you give up? Remind him. Keep reminding him. If 2020 goes, you are there in 2021. God, I'm here. Once again. Remind him. Commit your plans. Just commit them to God. Some people are worried about their age. Your age is your enemy. Oh God. You're growing up. Some ladies, you know, are so scared about their age. When God adds them one more year, oh, they get so scared. Again, I've turned 34 and no one has proposed to me. Yeah? Some people are so scared. As in, as you age up, you are, like, you are so afraid. You even don't want to mention your age. You don't want to tell us your age. Man, oh, no. Yeah. Listen to me. Just commit. Commit it before the Lord. And the Lord knows the right time. There's a reason why you are not yet there. There's a reason why you are not yet married. He has it. It is him who knows it. And stop getting worried about yourself. Let God worry about you. Amen? Because it says in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verses 11, if you're a Bible reader, that's just those are verses that you should be having here. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 7 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Thought to give you a future, to give you a good expected end. Who knows the thought about you? It is God. He says, For I know the thoughts I think toward you. Him who knows. Not your mother, not your leader, not the president, not the king, but God. If you're reading the Bible, don't just read just for just. Read the Bible slowly and take the revelation. You need to derive the, the, the revelation of what you're reading. God is so careful. Whatever he has said, you know, there's, a, there's no way God can deny his word. So if he says he knows the thoughts he thinks about you, then why, why are you worried about you, yourself? Why are you worried about your future? You're worried about your children. He knows. Say, God, you know it. You said, you know. Remind him. He knows. Whatever you're going through, he has an idea. 
He has an idea. He has a crew. You know the Lord is your friend. Don't plan to give up. Amen? He knows what you're going through. He knows your needs very well. Don't give up yet. You go and set your preferences from the most pressing to the least. And say, God, here, here they are. Just, you set them there, write them down. And remind him every day. Daniel chapter 2 verses 21. Daniel chapter 2 verses 21. He changes times and seasons. He moves kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. <laughs> this is the nature of God. This is Daniel telling us. He changes times and seasons. Who changes times and seasons? God. You wanted it 2020. But God changes times and seasons. So he's a governor of times and seasons. If you can read about these things and know the nature of God, the way he works, these are some, some of, the, of God's workings. When God is dealing with you, you must be, put this in mind that God governs times and seasons. Yes, I wanted, this, I wanted that thing this month. I wanted it this year. I wanted to, to travel this year. But it has failed. You have not traveled. You have not built a house. You, you, you have not gotten married. Yes. Who governs time and seasons? God. Somebody. He will come. And you will see it. Your time is coming. You know, God comes at, at the appointed time. God does not delay. And God does not come early. But he comes at the appointed time. Amina. But your appointed time is there. He has been preparing you. He has been setting you well. He's working on you. He's surrounding you. Say amen. He changes times and season. That's why he's able to remove kings and set up kings. That's why sometimes I don't want to scream, make noise for these politicians. Because God knows. You may shout and develop headache for nothing. Him in heaven knows. Amen? There's someone you may look at, ah, this one, this one, according to what I see, and you begin to, may, to, to come up with your own judgments. This one is the president. This one is the next one. Yet, if you have never read this, that's why you always depend on your Bible to judge things. He removes kings and sets up kings. God himself. You just pray, God, give us a, a king that you want. Just choose us a king. Give us a king. Give us a leader that you want, you want to lead us, to, reign, to rule us. Anyone who comes, God has appointed him. Why? Because God governs his time. Your time is governed. There is no time wasted. Even when you wept, God was seeing it. Actually, it was of your advantage. That's why David said somewhere in Psalms 56, around there, 56 verses 8. Around there, I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure, but it's around 56. He said, He counts my tears. He draws my tear in his bottle. He draws my tears in the bottle. And he counts them. Can you imagine? Counts one, two. Each tear you've been shedding, but in the presence of God. There are people who shed tears out of the presence of God. Eh? You cry because you feel lonely. You feel things have not worked out. The thing is, always shed tears in the presence of God. Don't cry before men. They will, they will look at you and they have no answer. Amen? Shed tears in the presence of God because him has a bottle where he draws your tears and then counts them one, two, three, four. Then later, he will reward you. He will come to answer your prayers. Amen. 
just encourage yourself. Be in season and out of season. Some people are worried about Christmas. Oh God, I have not gotten a dress. I have, have no shoe. I have no, uh, I have no rice. I have no what? Beef and ABCD. And I have no hope for money. Don't worry about those things. Let him worry about you. He will take care. I said he's going to take care. Say amen. Anxiety kills. Worries are killing people. I tell the mothers who have been buried because they're worried about their children. Because this simple lady, humble lady was trusting, you know, looking at your, his daughters or sons and was seeing lots of things in them. But maybe they turn to be drug addicts, you know. They begin to do some nasty things and they develop pressures. Most of people who are dying, about, uh, who are dying from pressure things are rotating around their families eh? they're worried about children worried about finances and abcd worries are killing people so it's very bad to come to as in we come to attend your funeral and they say he died of pressure things at least if it's maybe god's what but we shouldn't come to attend your funeral because of pressure stress there's a pastor who killed himself in the United States. <laughs> I had pressure. He was stressed up. He decided to commit suicide. And he was a pastor. Guess where he is? So, as I plan to wind up, just put it in mind that God governs time and season. Your time is coming. The right time. Each of everything that you have been that, that you put down in your book, the Lord knows it. That's why the Bible still says in the book of Philippians chapter, chapter 4. He says, do not worry about anything. But through prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your needs be known to him let your needs you need to let them know let him know about it let him know about the fees let him know about what you don't have let him know about your future and leave it to him don't again be concerned if you have if you have told him if you told him some some time back about your family about your needs about your health leave it to him don't worry even if you are down on bed and you are like suffering, you say, just know I told him. Even if you are to die, that you know I, have, I told him, maybe this has come, it's my time. Be happy all the time, rejoice all the time. Every day you need to rejoice. Believe in God, have faith. I don't know what you have not realized, I don't, I don't know what you've net, you have not gotten this year. I cannot tell the size of your dream. I, I, I don't know what you wanted to be and you have not become it. The thing is God knows about it. He knows about it. Hallelujah. Is this bad news? I said God knows about it and he's going to take care about it in Jesus' name. Be ready in season and out of season there's a champion in you maybe you wanted to be to serve God in a mighty way in a mighty way but now you're not you know keep praying keep yearning it's not over it is God who says it's over amen that's why the, the, this proverb is telling commit your works to him your plans, already commit them before him. Yes, God, here are my plans. Full stop. Go and do your business. That is his business. The business of answering you, the business of your solution is for God. Solution does not come from anywhere. It comes from God above. But some of us pray. The reason why some people continue to be worried is that you are praying with a formula, with a method. 
If you want three million dollars, you're like, oh God, how can Trump know about me? <laughs> Praise God. If I can get Bill Gates' contact, you pray, oh God, touch Bill Gates. <clears throat> and you pray, make that touch prayer. For years, you want Bill Gates, God to touch him, his life, that you become friends, then later you ask him for $3 million. I'm telling you, God is able to do all things. Hmm? You, don't need to, you don't need to have anyone. You don't need to pray while looking at anything. Just pray and believe him and wait upon him. Amen? And sometimes, if you go back and check your prayer list, maybe somewhere, somehow, what you are asking God for is a small thing and it's like, I want to prepare you to a level where you can know how to ask for some, some big things that, that will make me God. Yesterday I was talking to Pastor Maggie Raymond and said, eh, God is a man who loves to show off. Eh? And that is his nature. That's in Luganda. He wants to show up, you know, to, to prove that he's strong. So if you want to know God is God, you ask for impossible things. Those complicated ones. And leave him. You just say, God, I want to have my own Namboli. I want to have a stadium, a playground. I want to own it and believe, believe God. Such things. Mega, mega things. That needs governments to come in. And what have you. Ask him and leave it there. You will see him. He will come and show himself strong in your life. You will see it someday. Because that makes him God. Hallelujah. Never, if you are praying with two minds, the Bible says he hates a double-minded person. If you are double-minded, you are here and there, he hates you. You need to look at him. To stick on him. Amen. So if you are worried about Christmas, what, what, I've come, this is a solution for you. Just leave it to him. Give it to God in prayer. Let him know about it. And don't, don't put your heart there. Pray. Leave it. It's good to worship God. Actually, if you have some music in the house, learn to put music. For us in, in my house, I and my wife, I, I used to not know how to dance. I'm not a good dancer, actually. <laughs> but these days, man, put on my music. I increase the volume a bit. Hey, we start, I dance for them. And this also get, eh, she gets seen and also. And now all my, 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 my girls, they know that is a dancer. But here you don't know. But my children know. Amen? I'm very good. I can break dance, I'm telling you. Hey. Just, I want to celebrate, love God. And that makes me, you know, I, if you want to stop anxiety, worries, Wow. May I know my time? Show me. Show me. I have to keep time. I don't want to waste most of time. Because I've not seen anything. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm winding up. Get something. Get music. Put it there. Put music on your phone. Dance. Worship the Lord. Don't focus on what you don't have. Don't focus on the things that you told God already. He knows them already. He knows it. The Bible says I, he knows that you need those things. Now just do other things. Worship him. Praise him. Amina. Wow. Get up on your feet. Be ready in season and out of season. If you have not seen it this year, if you have not bought last year, just know the Lord is going to take care about that in the name of Jesus. Amen? Wow. I want us to pray. I'm coming back to the hallowed worship.
When it's all about you, when it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the sins I've made. When it's all about you, when it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all, it's all about you. Pick it up. When it's all about okay. you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the sins I've made. When it's so all about you. When it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to heart of worship. When it's all about you, when it's all about you, Jesus, I'm sorry, Lord, for the sins I've made. When it's all about you, when it's all about you, Jesus, I'm coming back to the heart of worship. When it's all about you when it's all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the sins i've made when it's all about you when it's all about you jesus i'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for sins I've made. When it's all about you, when it's all about you, Jesus. When it's all about you, when it's all about you, when it's all about you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are sorry for the sins we have done. We are sorry, O oh God, for being worried, yet you are God. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, may you take us back in the heart of worship. I pray for your people right now, King of glory. May you take them in the heart of worship in the name of Jesus. I speak in the mighty name of Jesus. May you touch them. Touch each one of them, O oh God. Their dreams are coming true. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. I release the anointing of God upon you that will make you firm and confident as you wait upon the Lord, as you wait upon Jesus. I release the fresh anointing. May you see your dreams come true. May you see your everything come true. May you see your children go back to school. May you see your answers come immediately. May the Lord give you power and anointing to wait on Him. Because they that wait upon the Lord shall not faint, shall mount up on wings as eagles. Yes, they shall walk and not be weary. I release that anointing upon you as you rise up on your wings, as you mount up on your wings, as eagles, you penetrate through the storm and wait upon the Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus. Whoever is heartbroken, whoever has been dying of sorrow and anxiety, I pray may the Lord surround you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, King of glory. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord, we appreciate you with our hand claps. With our hand claps, oh God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Come on, do it better than that as you appreciate the Lord. For he has answered your prayers. He's given you strength to stand. In the name of Jesus. Wow. Thank you so much. God bless you. Um, we have Wednesday. Please come here for a special service. We're going to be with Pastor Robert. Please don't miss it. One thing you want to do. Be strong. Be firm. Amen. The Lord has heard your prayers already. Anytime, just be ready. Okay? Amen. God bless you. You are corona free in Jesus' name. You are poverty free in the, in the name of Jesus. Amen.
May the Lord supply all your needs. May the Lord surround your families. May this week be a blessing to you in Jesus' precious name. Until we meet again, have a good week. Amen.